What's up, everybody? Todd Anderson with AV Nirvana. Before we get the show underway, I want to let you guys know about a really cool giveaway that we're hosting with our awesome friends over at SVS. Now, when you think SVS, you're thinking just big, powerful subwoofers, fantastic sounding speakers, and they definitely have those. But they also have a lineup of accessories that you can use in your home theater room or your media system. And just a few weeks ago, they launched this. This is an HDMI 2.1 cable. It's certified and I've been using mine for about a week and a half. It's been completely flawless, beautiful picture, great sounding audio, no sparkles on the screen, none of that nonsense. So this is definitely a cable that you want to add into your system. Now, when we talk about HDMI 2.1, that means this cable is capable of 8K 60 Hertz video, 4K 120 Hertz video, and up to 48 gigabits per second bandwidth. And then, of course, all of the really awesome features that come along with the 2.1 specification. Also, something that you want to think about when you're buying a 2.1 cable is looking for this little seal of approval. That's a QR code and a holographic image that can only be scanned by an HDMI cable certification app. You can get that app loaded onto your phone, scan that little code, and then that's going to let you know that the cable has official approval from the ultra high-speed HDMI cable certification program. So I'm guessing you're wondering, how do you win one of these cables? Just look right down below in the description. At the very top, you're going to see a link over to our form, to a thread where you can enter. All you need to do is be a member. It's 100% free. Once you're logged in, just leave a comment in the comment section. That's it. And you get one entry into the contest. Now, if you put a little asterisk at the end of your comment, like you see me doing right here in this example, you will get an additional entry. So basically we're giving you two free entries into this contest. All right, that's all I've got for you now. Best of luck winning one of these super high-tech cables and enjoy the show. On this episode of Base Hunters, we're taking a closer look at the home theater system we'll be using on our journey to finding reference quality movie base. And we'll be taking a quick look at the types of technology we're going to use to analyze it. Stick around. How's it going, fellow home theater fans and bass fanatics? My name is Todd Anderson partner and editor over at avnirvana.com and your host right here on Base Hunters. I am so excited to be getting this show off the ground. Today is our inaugural episode where it's kind of like a primer, a little background story on exactly what we're doing. And as you can tell from the title of the show, Base Hunters, we are all about movie base. We are on the hunt for reference quality, demo-worthy base that you can use to show off your home theater system or if you're like me on a random Saturday afternoon you just like to hang out and push your system to the limit with some of your best bass clips I have a lot of those that I uh, that I frequently go back to and watch and enjoy I'm sure you do too and together through this show we are going to be finding the best of the best before we dig in, I'd like to give a special shout out and thank you to our great friends and partners over at Kaleidoscape. Kaleidoscape truly is an incredible system. I reviewed one a little bit over a year ago, totally fell in love with it, so much so that I bought one and integrated it into my own home theater. It gives me access to disc quality or better movies, both in 4K and standard HD with lossless audio. We're talking the best of the best codecs. Its library has more than 13,000 titles that can be downloaded in as little as 12 minutes. Here's a look at the company's new 72 terabyte server. And there's its Strato C movie player, which I have in my own system. And what's really cool is you get access to movie titles weeks before they come on disk, sometimes more than a month in advance, which is something we'll be taking advantage of on this show. Go to Clydescape.com for more information. All right, and we definitely appreciate Clydescape partnering with us on this venture. Today's episode is more or less a reference point for future episodes, giving 
you, the viewer, a behind the scenes look at the kind of gear and technology that we will be using to make Ace Hunters possible. And all of that really starts with a dedicated home theater room. It has 19 different speakers, uh, making for a 7.4.8 array of audio playback. Up top, there's eight SVS Elevation Immersive Channels, and those are used for Atmos and DTSX Pro uh, presentations. And the front and back channels are positioned in a way that they can be used for Oro 3D. Hopping down a layer, the front end of the system features Golden Air Triton 1.Rs, the mains, and the company's Super Center reference serving as the center channel. Now in the back, we find SVS's Ultra Bookshelf in the rear surround positions and Ultra Surrounds on the sides. And of course, this show is all about the base. And those duties are anchored by SVS's top line SB16 Ultra subs in the front and two of PowerSound Audio's dual 15 inch driver SX30s in the back. The entire home theater system is managed by Storm Audio's ISP MK2 processor, and you can see that right there on the rack. The MK2 uses Dirac Live with the Dirac Bass module to keep bass detailed and smooth. And let me tell you what, folks, it really does a fantastic job. To give you an idea of output, here's a look at my system's Dirac post calibration results. And that is uh, all four subs with the system's front, left, and right channels. As you can see, there is plenty of heavy hitting right down to 20 hertz and below. Here's a little spectrograph to wet your palate, illustrating the sub's ability to effectively playback tones from 15 hertz up to 25 hertz and beyond. Now just below the MK2, you can see a 20 terabyte Kaleidoscape movie server. That houses the vast majority of the movies we'll be using for Base Hunters. But on occasion, we might need to dip into the world of discs, in which case we'll tap the OPPO UDP203 or the Panasonic UB9000. 4K players uh, that you see right there at the bottom of the rack. The theater room's 15 speakers get their juice from Emotiva amps, which you can see right there at the top of the rack. And the entire movie experience is executed by Kaleidoscape Strato C movie player. That player dumps audio and video to the Storm processor, which in turn funnels video to a JVC NX7 4K projector. That projector lights up a CinemaScope Seymour Screen Excellence trim screen, which features the company's lighter Neato material and motorized masking. So that's the system that will be serving as the audio hunting ground for bass hunters. But once we identify a demo-worthy bass, we'll also be analyzing it with a good old-fashioned microphone and a supercomputer. And here's what that looks like. Right here, you can see a photo of the back of my home theater room. And right there in the center seating position is a mini DSP you make one microphone. Now that microphone is connected to a MacBook Pro and is feeding audio into an audio analyzer called Signal Scope X. Now Signal Scope X takes a uh, calibration file from Mini DSP that's associated with my microphone and uh, it takes the audio signal and allows me to analyze it in multiple ways. Now, for purposes of this show, we're going to be analyzing bass using two different tools. One is a live spectrogram, which you see uh, right there on the bottom of the screen. And the other is a FFT analyzer, which you see uh, right up there at the top. Now, the spectrogram is going to give us a live shot of four seconds moving from right to left. Uh, it's a really, really neat visualization of audio. Along the left-hand side there, you see a frequency starting at 10 hertz down below, all the way up to 24 kilohertz. Uh, but we're mainly concerned with bass sets, I'd say, at 100 hertz or less. Um, and the intensity of sound is represented by color. You can see the scale on the right-hand side of the screen. The more red it is, the more intense it is. Moving up top, you see the FFT analyzer, and basically what that shows is the magnitude or strength of frequency components. Now, magnitude is represented on the left-hand side of the scale, and along the bottom there, you see frequency with uh, 20 hertz, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, and uh, so, so on and so forth. But basically, uh, this is a way for us to see which frequencies are the most powerful. And you'll see that in the example, uh, the live example that I show you in just a second.
So here are two additional screenshots. These are taken from Ready Player One. And you can see in this first uh, screen grab, there is a tremendous amount of base energy in the 30 hertz range. Uh, and it bleeds well down below 20 hertz. And that is accurately represented right down below in the right hand corner of the spectrogram. Uh, you can see the most intense red is right in that 30 hertz region. But check out the bleed. It is just drifting all the way down to 10 hertz. That is just some incredible bass. I mean, everybody knows this movie is one of the all-time greats when it comes to bass output. And here is the visual proof. Here is another slide. Uh, this one shows something very similar. But what's interesting about this particular screen grab is you can see the, the energy is super high in 40 hertz. 30 hertz and even down at 20 hertz. It's a very nuanced sound right there. Multiple frequencies are represented with lots of power. And again, that is represented in the spectrogram down below in the right hand corner. And you can see the intensity of bass that is down to 20 hertz and below. It's, it's much more so than in the slide that I just showed you. So before Bass Hunter episodes go live, it's my job to subjectively experience a movie and pick out what I think are demo-worthy bass moments. Then I go back with my equipment, I capture that audio, analyze it, and then show it to you so you can see exactly what I was hearing. And then we can decide whether or not those scenes are reference-worthy or not. Unfortunately, we don't own the rights to these movies, so we can't show you full audio and video clips along with the live graphs. But we can show you movie stills, and we can also give you a sense of what the audio sounds like in most cases. Now, it'll give you a little bit of a sense. I mean, of course, you're going to be playing this back through computer speakers or through your phone, so you're not going to get the full impact. To get that impact, you're going to need to get the movie yourself, but it will give you a sense of what's going on. And this is exactly what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna show you just about a 15 or 16 second clip from Ready Player One. And you can see these live graphs in action. And uh, it gives you a really good sense of how you're going to be able to visualize reference base. Wow, that movie is something else when it comes to bass. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you today. You can find me on Twitter, at AVWoofer, and you can also find me over at avnirvana.com. My username is my name, Todd Anderson. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. We'll see you soon.